The UK unemployment rate falls to its lowest in 42 years. Strikes hit Greece. The UK government sells its holding in Lloyds Bank and tension at the White House weigh on market sentiment here in Europe. This is the Daily FX European market outlook. Let's have a look at the numbers and just see what's happening just now. It's about 10 past one in the afternoon here. You can see it's a sea of red. Well, the squabble surrounding Trump's alleged sharing of sensitive material with Russia and the FBI chief sacking it's all contributing to the lack of risk appetite it's boosting the yen and gold the safe havens but it's sending bosses lower UK unemployment is now at the lowest since 1975. The overall jobless rate fell to 4.6 in the January to March quarter. That's down from 4.7 a month ago. But real wages are shrinking. Well, if we look at the pounds here, we can see it was little changed on the release, but it did creep marginally higher against a weak US dollar. That's the big story of this week as well, the, U the weak US dollar. Now, cable currently trades, as we can see, we've got it 12964 just there. A break above the May the 7th high would see cable trading back at levels last seen in late September 2016. Well, excluding bonuses, average weekly earnings increased by 2.1%. This follows Tuesday's report, which showed inflation hit 2.7%. In April. That was its highest since September 2013. Well, if we talk about those unemployment levels, then part of the reason is that the rate of women in employment is increasing, partly to changes due to the state pension age of women, uh, which means fewer women are retiring between the ages of 60 and 65 now. So that's why we have that, that job number, well, partly why, in a way. But as I say, wages are the real issue at the moment, and that's all related to inflation. Let's talk about some strikes in Greece because they're ongoing. They're affecting hospitals, transport services, and government offices across the country. Well, the strike is over new austerity measures ahead of a vote by MPs later on today on reforms that will cut pensions and end tax breaks. Oil, let's have a look how this one is doing because it's been a big story of the week. I will get up the chart for you because... It's been up, it's been down, it's been all over the place and a lot of it is to do with this supply glut and hopes on OPEC to extend this production cut. We had noises from Russia and Saudi to do just that. But the price continues to struggle a little bit and that's because we had a report, the latest report from the API inventory report which showed a surprise build in US stockpiles. Now this is despite the US dollar as I mentioned, it's currently at its lowest since the election last November. So oil is certainly something we're going to be watching, especially as Wall Street opens up later on today. Right, let's talk about some of the moves and shakers because we had uh, the property development company, British Land. It's reported a rise in full year profits despite challenges in our markets following the EU referendum. That's what the company said in its statement. The shares have shared, as we'll be able to see, they're now down about three and a tenth of a percent just there, and they trade now at a three week low. Lloyds Bank is another one we want to talk about because it's no longer partly state owned. The British government has sold its remaining shares eight years after pumping £20 billion in it to save it. And the bank said the government will see a return of £21.2 billion on its investments. Well, taxpayers owned 43% of Lloyds during the financial crisis. The shares reacted positively, as we can see, adding about two and four tenths of a percent just there, hitting an 11 month high at one point. SSE, this is another one. It's warned that its, uh, its dividend could be under threat by challenges facing the sector in the coming year, uh, referring to the unintended consequences of a price cap on tariffs proposed by the Conservative government. Now, talking of the Conservatives, I just want to give you the latest. Obviously, it's um, an election coming up very soon. And I want to talk about the Chancellor, Philip Hammond, because he said Labour's manifesto doesn't add up and makes no sense. Talking about Jeremy Corbyn's numbers, the Chancellor told the BBC he's made £105 billion of spending commitments and £47 billion of tax raising pledges. Even if we accept the numbers on tax that he's presented, that's a £58 billion 
black hole, which would be a blueprint for crashing Britain's economy. So that's what he says. Uh, now, according to the think tank Capital Economics, the Labour manifesto was, um, if it was implemented, it would boost UK GDP growth by increasing investment spending. But the growth will come at a cost of higher debt, which would potentially result in higher interest rates. Uh, Labour has pledged an extra £250 billion over the next 10 years. Uh, let's move on and talk about what's happening on Thursday because we've got Japan's GDP reading coming out, Australia's unemployment rate, the UK retail sales and the US initial jobless claims. On the earnings front, Burberry. We've got Royal Mail, um, something that Labour wants to renationalize uh, we've got dairy crest as well walmart and gap so u.s retailers still um, producing numbers this week thank you very much for watching let's leave you with the numbers today